Hey, good morning everyone. Uh, what I'm going to do in today's video is give you guys a run through of the SV111 multi-level multi-frequency vibration calibrator from Svantec. Um, this can be used for single axis accelerometers, whole body seat pads, hand arm, um, vibration analyzers, um, and yeah, a multiple purpose instrument for vibration calibrations. So what we have is the instrument, we have a safety bracket for transport, we've got a mains adapter, some screws I'm going to run you through soon, uh, some tools for taking off these brackets and also the brackets themselves. And in today's video I'm going to run you through the SV100A in situ check and also the calibration and also the SV103 hand arm vibration dose meter. So first things first, we've got a mains adapter, goes into the side of the case pretty straightforward. I've got enough battery in there now, so I'm not going to use it. Also, please note when you're doing these sorts of measurements, uh, it'll have to be on a sturdy surface, so your office desk isn't going to be so appropriate. We do it on the in the our office on like a thick tile, for example, so we're minimizing that vibration. There's an automatic level sensor in here, so it's going to tell you if your desk is moving around, that sort of thing. But I just want to get started. So first things first, uh, we've got a tool here which is used with a screwdriver part and we're just going to undo the mounting bracket which is for transport okay now that we've got that dismantled what we need to do is apply the base plate for the bracket for the whole body seat pad so if we just unscrew this here, they fit into the case quite nice. And then what you can see is you've got like a three holes, obviously lining up with the base plate of the vibration shaker. Now it's recommended to use as many screws as you want. For an in-situ check, one screw in the middle should be fine. But for today's measurement, I'm gonna use three just to make sure that we are not getting any resonance through that adapter. So basically, once we have a base coupler mounted, what we have is a bracket to hold our SV100A and also the SV38V from the SV106. And what we're gonna have to do is mount this sensor to this bracket. We have a supplied screw, so there's a couple spares here. They're the right length that we can use. And that's gonna go basically into the back of the bracket and into our SV100A like so. So what I'm gonna do is just get mine out of my box. On the SV100A, we have the orientations X, Y, and Z. In today's video, I'm gonna start with Z so we can have a look at it on top, just for visualization. And then I'm gonna flip vertically so we can do X and Y. But basically, as you can see, the Z facing, sorry, the Y is facing like so. And on the bottom of the bracket, we have the tightening screw. So this is basically gonna go into the bracket like so. So let's just attach this now. So once it's nice and firm, you can see basically that the bottom bracket lines up with Y. So make sure the X and Y is lined up. So as you can see, that'll be Y. And then we can rotate the pad itself, not the bracket. So for today's video, what we have also is the Z function. So as you can see through there, there's a screw. This is going to pop through and tighten up this bracket to our base plate. And as you can see on top here, this is where this bracket's going to line up to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it on and it's going to clip in like so and then what we can do is jump on the other side and just tighten it up underneath and it'll be nice and tight. Finger tight is fine and then we're set up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch on the SV100A. And I'm also going to switch on the shaker itself. So to turn it on, we just press the level and the frequency button together. And we can release it. So it's just going to go through its warm-up. Now, based on calibrated levels and frequencies, the whole body X, Y, and Z axis, we are going to do 1 meters per second at 16.92 hertz. Now, as mentioned, this is a multi-frequency, multi-level calibrator. You can use this for all sorts of accelerometers to check your sensitivities and verify your accelerometer. So, for example, pressing the frequency button, we can go through 636, 15, 80 hertz, and 160 hertz, and also the level. So, 10 meters per second, 1 meters, 2 meters, 3, 4, 5, 
anything you guys want to do, really multi-function calibrator you have here. But for this video, I'm doing the Z-axis, 16 hertz at 1 meters per second. Um, for the SV100A, there's a calibration button up the top here, so we're just going to hold the top right button, it's going to go into the calibration menu. Now, for this video to start, I'm going to do it by measurement, and because we're doing the Z axis, as you can see, this is the uh, horizontal axis, I'm going to scroll down until we get to Z and press enter. Now that's our level, is 1 meters per second. What we're going to do is press start on the calibration, there's going to be a 5 second delay, and that gives me time to press start on the shaker, which is going to auto level. So, what we do is we press enter, and I'm going to press start on the shaker. What you can see is the 3 X, Y, Z axis is going to be leveling, so this is a leveling. Try to stay away from the table or the, or the tile or whatnot, just while it's doing this. So as you can see, it's leveled okay now. And we're going through the internal calibration of the SV100A. It's got 160 seconds. In the manual it says repeat this test up to three times. Just, it depends, these are periodical calibrations. The in-situ check is more of a verification before and after a measurement, but the periodical calibration, they do say repeat it a couple of times just to make sure the cow factor goes down as low as possible. So we're just gonna wait for this to count down. Okay, so as you can see, we're nearing the end of the internal calibration here. Uh, it's going to tell us to accept the calibration or cancel, so we have a new cal factor. So the factor was 0 0.30, now it's 0 0.31, which is in 0.1 of a decibel. So I'm going to accept that with the bottom right arrow. Now, based on the standard and the weighting filters that are applied to whole body vibration measurements, WD, WD, and WK for X, Y, and Z, we expect a level. The level is 0 0.7 or 771 millimeters per second on the Z channel. So if I step back, not touching the table, it's, as you can see, it's 7.772 millimeters per second, which is fantastic. I'm happy with my results. Fluctuating just a little bit, 0.1 of a millimeter. Also, I've changed the integration period to one second and infinite cycles just so I can see the resolution a bit better. But when you do an in situ check, this will confirm that for you. So, now that the Z axis is done, I'm gonna flip this up and we're gonna do X and Y. Same measurement, we're, we're expecting a different level for the other two axes, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. So we just press stop, always press stop on the shaker as you don't wanna move it around while it's shaking. So once again, we use our supplied Allen key unscrew it, the plate pops off. Now, as mentioned, we've got this socket underneath. So as you can see, this is how you tighten it up and de-tighten it as well. And that's gonna screw and that's gonna fit into there. So, let's mount it like so. As you can see, it fits in nice and smooth. Hopefully Hank can see that. And we're just gonna tighten it up on the back side here. Alright, so once we've reorientated the seat pad, as you can see, this is in the Y axis now. Same thing applies, holding the calibration menu on, on the top right. Now, by measurement, enter, and I'm going to go up this time to Y axis. Now, as I mentioned, five second delay, so I'm going to press start. That's my level, press start, and I'm gonna start the, the shaker. And once again, you can see that it's auto leveling. We're gonna get green lights. If you're in the field and one of these lights is red, probably because of what you're mounting it on or what table you're using, that sort of thing. So just stick away from the actual surface and just let it do its own thing. So as you can see now, it's all green lights. Once again, we've got a, a minute 60 seconds or 160 seconds to go. So just wait for it to do its internal calibration. I'll come back to you soon. So now, as you can see, we're getting to the end of our um, calibration, so five seconds left, and it's going to ask us the same thing to approve that calibration. So I'm going to accept it uh, by just pressing the bottom right arrow. Now, once again, I'm just, I just want to verify that measurement quickly. Escape, escape. Now, for X and Y axis, based on those weighting filters we were talking about, we have a slightly different uh, value we're looking for. We're looking for 126 millimeters per second. So as you can see, the Y-axis in the middle there is really stable along 126 millimeters. 
So great stuff. Now, I'm gonna stop the vibration calibrator. As mentioned, we've got X to do. It's the exact same thing. You just put the socket in and rotate this vertically so X is facing vertical. All right, so now that we've done a calibration, like a standard measurement calibration with the shaker, I'm gonna do like an in situ check, which is basically a system check which the instrument has in its menu. Once again, in the calibration, hold the calibration button, but instead of by measurement, I'm gonna do by system check. I'm gonna go down to the same axis we were just looking at. This time I'm gonna press enter and we have our level. So once again, one meters per second like the shaker is displaying here. But I'm gonna start the shaker first, give it time to auto settle itself. Now when you do press start, obviously there might be a little bit of slight movement, but at least the shaker is already shaking. So wait for these lights. There should be at least sort of 30 seconds is an allowable time. Once it's green, I'm gonna press start. So basically we're waiting for the shaker to stabilize. So it's all green, press start. And there we go, there's our check. As you can see, the red lights are flashing, but they come straight on green. So it just gives you a little bit more time for everything to stabilize before your measurement. We're gonna wait for this 30 seconds, uh, sorry, not 30 seconds, still a minute, uh, 174 seconds. And then we should see a result at the end of this. This is before and after a measurement. Typically, if you're using this, you're the best in your game. This is what it's all about, is before and after measurements. Verifying that the whole body or the hand arm transducer hasn't um, been affected during the day's, the day's works. So we'll come back in a second. Okay, so now we're coming to the end of our in situ check. You can see that the level already is looking really good, 1.002, so we're just gonna wait. And as you can see, after three minutes of um, internal system calibration check, there's been no drift at all. So that's really as good as you get it. That's what you're doing before and after a measurement. If that results out, then that's where you should technically be doing the calibration of it. But let's just accept that, let's press exit. That'll come through in your measurement data at the end, which I'll show you through supervisor or PC++. Stop the vibration shaker once again. Um, and to turn it off, we're gonna press the frequency and level. I'm gonna add the bracket shortly and we're gonna do the hand arm 103. So that's basically, you're doing the same measurement with the system check X, Y, and Z, mounting the bracket as previously shown. But I think that should cover that for now. So thank you, I'll do the hand arm in a second, cheers.